Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us more. Lord God, may your Holy Spirit fall upon us this morning, that as your word is read and proclaimed, that we may be filled with eternal hope and celebrate the joy of salvation. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter beginning in the 11th verse. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live to the praise of his glory. In him you also when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give you thanks for you as I remember you in my prayer. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the, the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God has put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all the rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. As early as 610 A.D., the Christian church has set aside the first day of November to remember and celebrate the lives of the saints among us. This morning we celebrate the memory of the great cloud of witnesses that surround us, though gone in body or for alive with us in spirit now and forever. They shared their witness of faith with us, and with the world. They were the saints of the church. But their lives were not free from blemish or challenge. But throughout their journey, they knew that God was with them in good times and in bad, in suffering and in joy. And the very Spirit of God enlivened their souls. As the great hymn that we sang in the beginning of this service proclaims, we feebly struggle, they in glory shine. They have achieved the inheritance that God through our living Savior, Jesus Christ, has set for all of us. It's an inheritance, not a material thing, it's based on the reading of the last will and testament. Rather, it's a gift from our gracious God and has allowed them to pass through 
the gates of paradise. And as we speak and sit this morning, they are basking in the brilliance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, saints, most of us will never have a building named after us. Statues built in our honor, or even a name on a plaque in a prominent place for all to see. The saints of our lives are the ones that stood by us, who laughed with us, who cried with us, who journeyed with us. They were there for us and witnessed the very presence of God in their lives. And I would say they could care less whether anybody knew what they gave to us, either materially or with their love of God and love of us. They just wanted to share what God had given to them. So their gifts, those folks that we celebrate, all those we lifted up this morning, their gifts to us are the accumulation of small events and precious words that will forever dwell in our souls. To most people around the world, they are unknown people. But to us, they were giants among us. They were people who lifted us up. And to God, they are God's redeemed children who now worship in the great church triumphant. And so this morning, those are who we celebrate. And those are who we remember. It is their faith and their faithfulness that we carry on. I suppose as a preacher, I have the joy to have served, this will be my sixth congregation. And in every congregation, including this one, there are people that, that just work hard for nothing other than to share the joy of Christ with the people around them. To give so the lights come on, or, or, to, or to, to cook for a potluck, or anything, to weed the beds, whatever it might be, there are people in every church that do nothing for themselves, only for the Lord. That's what we celebrate today. We celebrate all the saints. And our hope this morning is for new life for them, but also new life for us. And that is based on our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. For ultimately, though this is a high holy day of the Christian year, Easter is profoundly the most important because we are people of the resurrection. And you see, since Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, those who have left us in body, too, have been resurrected to new life, a joyous life. But you know, we don't have to wait until we die to celebrate great the power of the resurrection. We don't need to wait until we at one time meet with them and all the other saints who have gone on before them, we can celebrate the power of the resurrection now. We can witness the good news of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ just as those folk witness to us. And so by the power of the Holy Spirit, with our eyes of our heart enlightened, we see the glory that God has prepared for each of us. That great cloud of witnesses that surround us are forever with us. And they have given us the tools of faith, of hope, and joy. The 
But for those of us who remain, we are also called to be the saints of the church. We are called to live out our lives in that hope and expectation. We are called to fight the good fight, to finish the race, and to keep the faith. William Penn once said that I expect to pass through this life but once. If therefore there be any kindness I can show, any good thing I can do to a fellow human being, let me do it now, for I shall not pass this way again. Folks, sometimes we only have one chance, one shot with someone else, one opportunity. Sometimes we have no second chances with people. One careless word or forgetfulness or a rumor unfounded or misunderstanding can mess up relationships faster than anything else. But if we understand that sometimes we only have one chance, let's celebrate the joy of believing in that one chance that we have with someone. Let us pray for the spirit of wisdom that would open our hearts, that we may see the joy in everyone, that we may witness what the saints have witnessed to us and to celebrate the inheritance to which we all have been called. You see, the gift of salvation is open to us all today. And today we give thanks for all the saints, those who rest from their labors and praise God for all eternity. We thank the Lord that we are given the chance to live in that hope, not only with each other, but with a great cloud of witnesses, and that there will be a day that our great Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will wipe away every tear from our eyes, that death will be no more, mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for at that time the first things will have passed away. For all the saints, O oh Lord, we give you thanks. Let the people